let's, let's talk about what's so special about Spring Health. I mean, what I read about it, it's the technology, it's the AI, the telemedicine aspect of it. I mean, you're 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 bringing all this in, and then you're also you're you're kind of outperforming traditional healthcare as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. So give shed some light on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can I can speak to it in so many different ways. One one thing that I did want to mention um, yeah. is that there's so much focus now on telemedicine. And we have competitors that treated telemedicine as an afterthought. Like they they started brick and mortar and then they kind of like tacked on virtual because it helped them scale, it, it helped with their unit economics. But we from day one have always believed that the future of mental health care is virtual. And so our infrastructure is optimized for virtual. So it's actually, it kind of feels like Spring Health was really built for, built to step up to this opportunity to help people through coronavirus. Um, the other way that we're special is that we use something called precision mental health care. So um, I met Adam at Yale, actually. He was finishing up his PhD and I, I was finishing up my undergrad. And um, I looked through Yale psychiatry papers um, that were coming out because I wanted to understand what was the latest and greatest in, in psychiatry coming out of Yale, Yale's labs. And I came across one of his first papers on computational psychiatry. And it was describing one of the first machine learning models proven to outperform the average psychiatrist and being able to predict whether a treatment would work for someone. And I fell in love with that approach and cold emailed him and somehow convinced him to grab coffee, coffee with me and, and eventually start a company with me. And you know, I tell that story because it, it's really it really shows the foundation of what we're trying to build. We're trying to use data to transform psychiatry. We're trying to build a world where guessing has no place in mental health care. We're trying to build a world where instead of people trying four different providers and seven different drugs to find something randomly that works, um, they can take our assessment and know from the start exactly what will work for them, whether that's a specific medication or a specific exercise or meditation or mindfulness. And you're located in New York right now, but I mean, it's all over the country, internationally as well. Or like, what's uh, you, you just got, like? The, what I'm trying to understand is, I know you just got a bunch of funding right before this the coronavirus hit, uh, which is good timing. Um, you know, where are you looking to expand the business and the network uh, outside of New York or whatever it may be, and what other areas? Yeah, so I'm really proud to say that we're available in all 50 states, like full full capabilities in all 50 states. And we're also global, too. So a lot of our customers are uh, or have global footprints. And so we accommodate that by, by delivering some of our services overseas. Um, you know, you say, you know, the timing was great for our fundraise, but it's really interesting. I think now is a really great time to fundraise. We're probably going to get more, right? <laughs> like um, VCs, I think, are, are really starting to double down on trends that are benefiting from, from coronavirus. And um, yeah, mental health is definitely one of them. So um, yeah, but yeah, we, we definitely uh, timed our fundraise, right? Like we didn't have to, to worry at all, but um, I think even now might be a, a better time to, to fundraise for. Well, let's stick with fundraising. Let's talk about fundraising. Uh, you, you had your first round back in 2000, was it six, 2018? And then right on, right on the mark, 18 months later, you, you timed it up and you got another raise. How do you look at it as a CEO raising capital? Um, you know, we are partners with Mike and Entra Group who have a bunch of startup entrepreneurs through their network and they're always looking for tips and tricks on fundraising, approaching bet investors, venture capital funds. You know, how, do you, how did you look at uh, fundraising? What did you learn through the process uh, that you could share with everybody? Uh, that's such a good question. Um, I think uh, always project a big vision um, and kind of work backwards from there. And so, you know, we, we have a huge mission and a huge vision, which is to, to raise the bar in mental health care broadly. Um, and, you know, when we were telling our pitch, our, the, the future of mental health care was just so clear to us. We understood that, you know, data would transform mental health care. We understood that mental health care would fundamentally look very different five, 10 years from now than it does today. Right now, providers, are limited to trial and error and guessing when it comes to care. But in five, 10 years, 
They're going to use data, machine learning to pinpoint exactly what will work for someone from the start. And as a result, people suffering will go away. P uh, care will become less expensive because people will not be wasting cycles on ineffective care. So um, start with the big vision. I would say also, um, what are some good fundraising tactics? I actually didn't think that, you know, if, if investors are proactively outreach to you through like their, um, what, what is it called? Their like principles or their, um, not analysts, who's the associates, right? Mm -hmm. um, that I, I always thought that that was a bad sign and that you shouldn't respond to those uh, inquiries. But actually, um, a lot of the times the, the analysts have like a thesis on mental health and or on whatever you're raising money for. And they're very you know, um, systematically reaching out to select founders and they can make introductions into partnerships. And that's actually how we raise our last round anyway. So don't ignore the, the principles or the associates. Right, right. Did you did you look at, I guess, a select group of venture capital funds that are in your in your selection or like how did you kind of pinpoint or target the right investors and then maybe even vet the investors too? Yeah. So I, I, I've always been very careful about board composition and, um, and the investors that I wanted to surround uh, myself with. I, I think that these are marriages. Um, they're even harder to get out of than than marriages, I would say. Um, and I think that boards can have uh, an interesting and, and um, inordinate impact on the direction of a company. And so I wanted to make sure that my board and my investors were really aligned with, with what we were trying to do. And um, I wanted to make sure that our board was, uh, was in it for the long term and that they, they saw the same vision that we did. So we did make a short list of investors that we wanted to go after. And ultimately we decided to work with uh, PJ, uh, who is a Midas List investor. And he was one of the first investors in Spotify. And we really saw an opportunity for us to collaborate in building uh, a really amazing product experience in mental health care for Spring Health, much like he did with Spotify. And we also saw an incredible opportunity with Northstone to uh, fuel our our efforts to go global. That's uh, some serious good tips there.